Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Canada once again for the first time in what feels like a good long while. So for this review, we are going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before. This must be review number six or seven featuring these guys, come to think of it. And I have had some very nice beers from them in the past. So we're going to go to Saint-Jérôme and Montreal. This brewery can have two places that they operate out of, and that is in Quebec, the French-speaking region. So for this one, we are going to have a look at another beer from Brasserie du Décile, and this one is the Salsas Diva, which comes in at 10.2% ABV, and it is an American-style barley wine. So um, yeah, this should be a really interesting beer. Like I said, I've had some really good stuff from Brasserie du Décile over the last a couple of years but I think it's been about two and a bit years since I last had something from them so nice to feature them here on the channel once again and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well so uh, yeah should be pretty awesome but uh, yeah as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Brasserie du Décile before and you will no doubt see more added to that list at some point in the fairly near future but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Canadian beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. Canadian beer is quite difficult to come across, so um, we just add to that when we can. But as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brasserie Dieu de Ciel then. So on to my brewery notes. So Dieu de Ciel um, started off as a brew pub actually in Saint-Jérôme in Quebec and it was founded by Jean-Francois Gravel and uh, he apparently had no formal brewing training when he started the company and he just learned to brew beer simply through his home brewing experiments. But he met Stéphane Ostigui uh, during a research project at the Armand Frappe Institute and he came on board in the company as well. Uh, but Jean-Francois came up with the name in 1993 to describe his home brewed series and you know Dieu de Ciel literally translates into English as God in Heaven but it's essentially the way that Francophone people will say oh my god basically uh, but apparently there is a certain boldness in the name of the brewery because uh, the Quebecois culture has been dominated for quite a while by the clergy and it's only kind of starting to um, to kind of open up a little bit if you like and uh, there's also been a big history of Belgian style brewing over there as well on the back of that which is pretty cool so these guys were one of the first breweries to come into the Quebecois province as um, you know as an American style craft brewery I guess we could say but the first brew pub uh, it was in Mon is in Montreal and it's got a 15, uh, 15 beers on tap at any one time and apparently there's also an apartment above the brew pub that visitors can rent and stay in so maybe I need to look at that when I eventually do get to visit Montreal um, but but they also decided that they needed to increase their production and so two new partners joined the company this is Luke Bolvin who is an, an electrical engineer and also Isabelle Charbonneau who is a sales expert and there's now a second brew pub and uh, they've also got a brewery in Saint Jerome as well which I believe is their main uh, their main production facility if you like and that opened back in 2006. Over the years they've continued to expand their brewing capacity and scale up and things like that but as of February 2021 when I'm reviewing this beer for you these guys have produced 526 different beers according to Untapped and there's a whole host of different styles in there. These guys were one of the first Canadian breweries that I ever, ever came into contact with and I'm sure it was actually Brewdog who started importing these beers into Scotland and I'm sure that was when I uh, actually came across them. The very first beer I think that I reviewed from these guys, I think I bought like three of them at one go and I kept one of them for uh, a special number review actually and that was brewed in collaboration with uh, Shiga Kohen, Tamamura Honten um, over in Japan. That was the Iseki Sancho if I remember rightly. Then there was a barrel aged version of that came out from uh, Shiga Kogan beer. Uh, a little bit later on and I've reviewed that one for you as well but um, yeah always cool to return to Jude Seal. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years and um, yeah I think 
Uh, they're always really inter they're always really good actually. But yeah, that's all I can really tell you about Brasserie du Decil for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can of course check out the Rate Beer, Untapped, and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all of the different beers that these guys have done. So uh, yeah, like I say, hopefully I can go over there and uh, have a look at their brew pubs. That would be awesome. I've never been to Eastern Canada, only to the west to uh, to Vancouver actually, but I need to go and have a little look at Alberta because my grandpa trained for the war there but of course um, Eastern Canada I think would be pretty fun as well so um, yeah should be cool to get out there and have a little look at it but yeah without further ado then let's get on with the beer as I say if you want to learn more about the brewery check out the website follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with everything and you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages but yeah there you can see the artwork on this one is very very nice um, you always get really interesting artwork actually on these Brasserie du Decile beers. There you can see the angel, of course, they're keeping up with that kind of God in heaven imagery. Oh my God, the angel on there. But um, yeah, like I said to you, this one is a 10.2% um, American style barley wine. Um, it didn't say anything really about what hops or anything are in it. But um, yeah, this is a pretty old school beer. I have seen this one released way back. Um, you know, years ago, but when I was at, when I, I think it was must have been about 2010 or something like that that I first encountered this brewery, and I know that this beer has been around since about then, so probably even before that actually. So um, yeah, 341 milliliters this one, and uh, yeah, this was released through System Wolaget here in Sweden. I think it was one of the Tilfered sortiments that it came through. It's been sitting in my fridge for a little while, but it's a barley wine, so you can kind of afford to do that with it actually. But uh, yeah, let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I'm very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. And just nice to have a Canadian beer on the channel for you once again. Oh, forgetting that it's a screw top. Forgot that Judy Seal do the screw tops. Quite a common thing over in North America actually. Um, but yeah, more and more beers move into cans these days. And it's also worth pointing out that Judy Seal have just undergone um, a rebrand. I think that's the first rebrand they've had in the um, the history of the company actually. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. Their new cans look pretty cool. They've got a big yellow sort of uh, label now that just says Dieu de Seal, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. So quite a change in image for them. So maybe the next Dieu de Seal beer that I do will be in a big 440 milliliter can. So uh, yeah, they've got quite a big production facility now from what I gather as well, but I couldn't find an exact figure as to um, how many litres and things they're producing per year. But um, yeah, anyway, as you can see with this beer then, and as you kind of expect of a barley wine, it's poured a lovely, very kind of, you know, sort of almost like cherry wood kind of colour. It's something like that, like a very, very dark kind of mahogany cherry sort of wood. You can see that when we poured the beer, there was a solid quarter finger of a frothy, I would say kind of fawn coloured head came out of this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones kind of going up towards the bottom of the head there, but not too many. And that head has just faded away to be a very kind of thin foamy layer. But yeah, if we shine the light through this, like I say, it's got a lovely kind of very dark copper sort of mahogany type colour to it there. It's a beautiful looking beer. Looks very, very nice. Remember, the colour of these beers is dependent on two things mainly. One, the type of malts that you use, and then two, the length of your wort boil. The longer you boil the beer, the more the sugar's caramelised, thus you get a darker colour out of it. But going by the colour of this one, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how long a boil this would have had. Normally, um, quite a lot of barley wines these days, especially the higher alcohol ones, have a longer boil. Um, whereas I think you can, you know, you can theoretically speaking, um, get away with a standard 90 minute boil on uh, on a barley wine but just kind of depends exactly what flavors and stuff you want out of it but um yeah this one i don't think this has had a madly long i don't think this has had a madly long boil on it because it's still got that nice kind of red color to it so yeah it's got that nice kind of rich mahogany type color to it but yeah in terms of a barley wine it certainly looks the part i've seen uh, barley wines be darker i've seen them be lighter so um yeah this one apparently uses an english type yeast as well i should add so yeah let's take a closer look at the aroma of this one then and just see how we get on i'm very very curious about this beer Ooh, that is pretty damn nice i have to say yeah um so it says here let me see best before the 2021 the 2021 10 7 so i'm not sure how they do the dates in Canada actually, do they do it that that's the 10, uh, 2021, um, do they do it like the Americans do or do they do it like we do here in Sweden? They might have done it like we do here in Sweden, so I think this one is saying it's best before the 7th of the 10th, 2021. So they're saying that this one 
Um, I wonder when it's been bottled actually. It doesn't have a bottled date on it. They used to, the old Judas cereals used to have a wee thing on the side where it told you when it had been bottled. They had little cutout thingies that they did. So um, yeah, obviously not anymore. But yeah, it also says on the side here, you can see there's a little UK SE thing on this one. So obviously this is um, one that's intended for export. So yeah, I wonder if this has sat for a wee while to age before they've kind of sent it out here. But um, yeah, it's interesting because that, you know, if that's only been, you know, bottled a year in advance, a year seems very, very short um, to leave a barley wine. Because usually they take about six months to kind of start to show you the, the kind of nice aging flavours and stuff like that. So they're always best after about six months. But I'm guessing it will be somewhere in that region just now. So, yeah. But uh, yeah, it certainly looks the part for a barley wine, like I said. But let's take a closer look at that aroma then and just see how we get on with this one. I think this will be very nice. Properly old school barley wine, this. Absolutely. Lovely stuff. Um, yeah, so where to begin here? So straight away with this beer, you do get a little bit of that kind of slightly smooth, bready sort of thing. Remember that the barley wine is basically the big brother of the double IPA. So yeah, um, it is yeah the, 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 the bigger brother, if you like, of these kind of big double um, West Coast American IPAs. But yeah, you do get a little bit of that nice kind of smooth quality with this one. I suspect there's probably like American Turo or Crystal Malt or something in here because it just has that lovely smoothness to it. There's a wee touch of a bread crusty quality in there, a little bit, pardon me, of a sort of wholemealy brown bread. And then on top of that, you've got these lovely big kind of sugary notes coming out of it. So yeah, um, lovely big kind of, um, sweet kind of oily, oily dark caramel coming out of this one. I wouldn't go as far as saying it's treacle and molasses, but there are elements of that in there. There's a few elements of that, but you can definitely smell that brighter, sweeter, straight up caramel in there, which I really, really like. Um, there's a few kind of toasty brown sugar elements to it as well, which I really like. Um, and those start to come out the more that your nose sort of adjusts to the beer, if you like. You do get more and more of the kind of toasty side of the brown sugars which I very much like. Um, so yeah, it's, it's got an interesting just layer of things in there. A little bit of treacle, molasses sort of thing, just a little hint of that in the middle. Then you get the sweeter caramel, you get the toastier brown sugar elements coming out of it, and you also get that nice kind of, um, you do also get that nice um, biscuity McVitie's digestive sort of thing in there too. So it's a really interesting um, concoction, this beer, just if we can put it like that, yeah. I do like how this one, uh, I certainly like how this one goes together, absolutely. Um, yeah, the aroma of the malty side here is very nice. You'll get a few woody and nutty kind of undertones out of it. There's one or two little grainy things in there as well, but you know, that's to kind of be expected with these barley wines. They've always got little complexities like that. But yeah, the malt base in this one, I think, comes across really nicely. You also do get an element of that kind of phenolic um, cough syrupy sort of thing that you'll get out of, for example, uh, um, you know, you also get a little bit of that, these, these kind of notes that you get are like quad repels and dubels and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, they're interesting for sure. There's a wee bit, of, there's just a wee bit of that in there. So maybe there's a wee touch of like candy sugar or something like that in this one, like the Belgians uh, use. But yeah, lovely aroma coming out of the beer. On the hoppy side of things, um, just going from the kind of hoppy side of the beer and looking at the green component of it, you can tell that this, I think this beer has been sitting in the bottle for a little while because you can feel that the hops are very, very smooth, whereas if it was fresher, the, the floral notes would be a lot more kind of pungent, if that makes sense. So on the hoppy side of things, there is a wee bit of earthiness there. You do get a little bit of a herbal character as well. There is an element of floral arom uh, aromaticity for sure, which I really like. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely a lovely big kind of floral quality out of the beer for sure. Um, but you've also got some, uh, you do, you actually do get a fair wee bit of grassiness out of this one. So the grassiness has kind of lingered there, but I think the floral notes have kind of died down a little bit. And just going from what I'm actually getting out of the green components here, I do suspect maybe a little bit of Cascade and maybe a little bit of, um, uh, I, I suspect a little bit of Cascade and also a little bit of, um, the um uh you know a little bit of chinook maybe as well i do think cascade and chinook i think this is quite old you know these are old school hops that are in this beer this beer has been around a long time and i don't really see them changing the hop build to something a bit more new like you know eureka or whatever will you met i think would be another um kind of option for the hoppy side of this beer and then you've got the english examples like you know bramling's cross or um or maybe you know northern brewer from germany which is quite popular in doppelbox that would be another kind of point in here 
Um, but yeah, the I think it's most likely that they're using the, the you know the Cascades and the Chinooks and stuff like that in this one. But on the fruity side of things, you do get a wee bit of a rich kind of plummy note in there. There's a teeny bit of raisiny sharpness, but I get a lot of fig out of this one and quite a bit of black currant. I don't get so much of the sharper and brighter blueberry. I'd say yeah, black currants, um, figgy notes, wee bit of um, you know a kind of plummy note underneath, like I said, and just a wee kind of touch of of raisin. I think I say you do get some of those kind of cough syrupy elements out of it as well. Some of those like you know pruny datey sort of things in this one too. So um, yeah, it's an interesting smelling beer. It's a very old school American barley wine. So as I always say, take a little bit of time to ponder over the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. That's always half the experience with craft beer, in my opinion. But we're going to have a taste of this one now and see how we get on. So this one is the Solstice de Ever. Uh, the winter solstice, if you want to translate the name, uh, an American style barley wine coming in at 10.2% ABV from Brasserie du Dicile in Saint Jerome and uh, Montreal over in Quebec in Canada. Let's get stuck in. Slange, skull, cheers. Oh, yeah. That is very nice. <laughs> A little bit more toasty, I think. I was expecting it to be. It has got a little bit of toastiness to it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a very, very nice beer, that. Absolutely. It is properly old school as well. And it has got a wee bit more bitterness to it than I was suspecting it might. So maybe it hasn't been sitting as long as I thought it might have. Um, maybe I'm reading the date the wrong way as well. So it could be 2021 10-7. So it could well have been that it's been bottled on the the 7th of October. So yeah, but it does have a good, it does have quite a bit of bitterness to it. Um, yeah, the other thing that could be is a wee bit of light damage or something, but... Um, could be a bit of lighter heat damage but i'm not i don't think so i don't think that's the case in this one because you know due to seal i've been exporting for a good while so I'd, and i've not had that problem with other beers that i've had exported uh that i've had from this brewery or it's, it's not been a problem with system bolaga for quite a wee while this one is a uh, wicked wines import as well actually normally they're fairly solid when dealing with their beers hmm. but yeah I do like this one. I've not had a barley wine that tastes quite like this one in quite a wee while. The other thing is it could be, you know, it's when I'm saying about the, the bitterness and stuff in this beer, um, there's that trend. The, the trend now is that, you know, with the New England IPAs and the haze craze and stuff, the level of bitterness in beers that you expect has dropped. So maybe it's when you come to an old school beer like this that does have the higher IBUs. It's just a little bit more of a kind of shock to the system, if you like, but it is what it is. But um, yeah. I do think this one is um, is a very, very nice beer, so it gets a thumbs up from me, absolutely. So yeah, um, where do we start with um, with this one then? So yeah, just it's a proper, this is a properly old school barley wine, good bit of bitterness and just, it's kind of got everything you want actually. It's got a good little bit of English character to it as well. The barley wine, of course, originated in, originated in England. So yeah, um, so straight away with this beer, then you can feel that nice sort of smooth brown bready wholemealy backbone to the beer that goes right across the middle of your tongue, and I think it comes out very very nicely. Um, so yeah, I do appreciate that about this beer for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, um, that forms the very backbone of the beer. Absolutely. Nice, smooth brown bread. You know, it sweetens up a little bit the further you go into it. And if you go to that border region between middle third and um, back third of your palate, there's a good wee bit of a kind of toasty, well-fired bread crusty note in there. Um, there is a really, like, actually a good little bit of grainy bitterness on that border region as well. But when you go into the back third of your palate, you get more of a kind of grainy, brown bready, rye bread kind of thing out of it, which I really, really like. Um, so yeah, the fruity side of this beer is um, is really really nice, absolutely. Mm. Um, yeah, um, yeah. The the malty side of this beer I think just goes together really really well. Um, 
Still getting used to the big bitterness that this beer has though, absolutely. Um, so yeah, where to start on the, the sweeter side of the malty kind of things then. So sitting on top of that nice kind of brown ready there that you've got in the very center of your palate, you do get a wee bit of a kind of more concentrated treacle molasses sort of thing. You do get a little bit of that there. On top of that though, and as you gradually move, it, it kind of comes out a little bit more as you go further out from the center of the palate, you do get a wee bit more of um, a kind of sweeter caramel side to the beer which I do like you do definitely get a bit of that yeah but you also get a really nice um you do also get a very very nice um as I say you do get a very nice kind of um more biscuity quality comes out of this one as well as you move further out from that center of the palate and the the more concentrated molasses kind of to brown sugary notes there, the caramel. The caramel incidentally comes across as being a little bit more toasty and as you get further out from that, you get the more biscuity elements. That sort of McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of things. But yes, yeah, you reach the kind of front corners of the palate then move diagonally back. There's a few woody elements in there. If you go to the center of your palate and just move forward, you've got a really nice little bit of a woody quality starts to come out of the beer as well. And I do appreciate how that um, goes together in this one. So again, thumbs up to um, Thumbs up to uh, Dew de Seal for the malty side of this beer. I think it does work really well. The sort of phenolic elements that I was picking up in the um, the aroma of this one, they come out a little bit in the flavour. Um, and I'm wondering if that's the yeast or if they have added a wee bit of candy sugar or something in it. So you do get a wee bit of that in this beer. But um, yeah, so this one's kind of an interesting one because you've got a bit more of the kind of graininess and toastiness you'd expect of an English barley wine, but you've got the big sweet characters you'd expect of the American one. So it kind of finds a happy medium, this beer, to be quite honest with you. So I can appreciate that about it. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things then, let's focus on that. In the back corners of the palate, there is a good little bit of earthiness there. And as you move further forward along the sides of the palate, it's got quite an intense spiciness and quite a big piney resinous character. I wouldn't be surprised if there's both Chinook and Columbus in this one. Um, but yeah, I would not be surprised about that at all, actually, um, because you've just got that big, deep um, you get the big deep pine resin underneath and then you've got the more spicy floral aromatic notes sitting on top and I, it's very rare to find a, a hop that's quite as spicy as Columbus. Columbus um, is a beast of a bittering hop and it's very very unique in that sense but then you know Chinook just gives you a bit of depth actually to these beers so yeah. But yeah I certainly like that uh, but round the front curve of the palate you get a nice little bit of a lighter grassy kind of note to the beer, which is good. Uh, but then on that front third of your palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So yeah, underneath that, um, underneath that kind of front part of your beer, uh, of your palate, sorry, you get a nice kind of brown bready sort of thing. You do get a wee bit of that and a wee bit of graininess. There is quite a bit of bitterness, a bit of a more roasty, toasty, grainy quality on that border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you absolutely get a little bit of that. But yeah, at the back of that front third of your palate, if we focus on the fruity side of things now, there is quite a little bit of an intense grapefruit there. It does have a real sort of pungency to it. But as you move further forward, you get a bit of a juicier plum and a wee bit of an intense raisin. Then as you move further forward from that, there's a little bit of a kind of figgy element to the beer as well. You really do get a little bit of figgy quality out of this one. Then on the front, almost on the front tip of your tongue, there's a bit of uh, black, current equality there and a wee bit more of an oily kind of blackberry type note so yeah I really like how all of that goes together for sure this beer I think is um, really solidly done from that context it's a properly old school um, it is a properly old school barley wine list so I think Chinook, Columbus and maybe a bit of Cascade in here for sure yeah pretty sure about that to be honest with you I think it's something along these lines but um, yeah it gets a big thumbs up from me and I really like this one it's quite a high bitterness beer as well so old, properly old school in that sense absolutely so um, yeah I think that kind of rounds off the flavour profile of this one quite well um, it's it's a really nice beer this one and I'm a bit disappointed in myself that I didn't review it beforehand I'm just a bit surprised at how uh, how bitter it is but I've certainly enjoyed uh, tasting this one for you so I need to just keep an eye on the due to seal releases that we're getting through System Bolaga over here but um, yeah in terms of the mouthfeel then so um, 
the I would say mouthfeel wise it's you know kind of bottom end of full bodied top end of mid bodied it's kind of like that probably a bottom bottom end of full bodied carbonation is very very smooth and um, the mouthfeel overall um, it's got a wee bit of oiliness to it, but I don't find this like a big sticky barley wine that you can sometimes get. Uh, on the bitterness, I wouldn't be surprised if this one's, you know, the 80, 90, 100 IBUs. It's definitely got a big, big bitter character to it. It's been blasted with the, with the early edition hops, definitely. Remember, when it comes to uh, your bitterness, it's all about your early edition hops, because over the wort boil, you've got that trade-off between uh, bitterness in the early stages and then flavour and aroma later on. So yeah, that's also worth bearing in mind. But the multi base, like I said, has a wee bit of a grainy character to it, a nice bit of smoothness, some nice sweetness in there. Then you've got some nice kind of juicy, oily, fruity characters to it as well. So um, yeah, I really like how um, how this one goes together. It's a, a really nice, um, um, it's a really nicely done barley wine. This so a big thumbs up to. Um, to do the seal for this one. I think it's another solid, solid beer. And I do hope that at some stage I can get across to Canada and have a little look at their um at their brew pub. That would be a pretty cool thing to do. So um yeah, let's leave it at that for the taste in this one. I have enjoyed this beer and I hope that you guys have enjoyed it as well. Um if you are interested in seeing some Canadian reviews more regularly, you can go and check out my friends over there, the likes of uh, Kerry Red Beers, there's off the tenth um, Western, I think there's is it Western Canadian beer reviews as well. There's quite a few Canadian beer tubers um, out there. Lee Russell has been around. He's been around since the very start of beer tube, actually. So, yeah, there's some really great Canadian reviewers out there. As I say, Lee Russell, Red Beard off the 10th. I forget if I'm um if i'm forgetting anyone because there are a lot there are quite a few guys up there that are doing stuff so um yeah do make sure you go and check them out but uh yeah that's all i can really um that's all i can really um can i say about this beer and do make sure you go and check those guys out like i said but uh, as always let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from brasserie du de seal as well we will no doubt return to these guys uh, let me know some other quebecois breweries that i should check out i know that here in sweden in a few weeks we're going to get a few um alberta beers which i th think would be quite interesting i've only had one or two beers from alberta before so definitely looking forward to those but um yeah be pretty cool to have a look at a few of those for you but yeah this one was the um, solstice diver the winter solstice 10.2 percent american barley wine from brasserie due to seal in saint jerome and montreal in quebec over in eastern canada thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys soon slanja skull cheers and make sure you check out this beer a properly old school barley wine this one